Here's one method I like to use for thicknessing the peg head. This is just my uh, um, oscillating spindle sander. And I've got a block clamped here. I measured it, it's nice and square to the table. And um, just by gradually bringing it in tighter and tighter, I can, br I can bring it into the thickness that I want the peg head to be. You, the only thing you have to, if you're going to use this method, the only thing you have to be careful of, uh, a couple of things. One, that you feed into the rotation of the sander. Um, obviously, you don't, you don't want to feed it this way because then it'll want to pull it through. And the other thing is that you hold the face of the peg head tight against the fence. Uh, otherwise, you'll get gouges and marks and stuff. We're going to glue the fingerboards onto the necks. And uh, we're going to use hot hide glue. What I've got here is uh, some 192 gram strength hide glue. The label says BT and C, but it's really uh, they, these guys are a distributor for Higgins and Milligan, I believe. So anyway, um, I like to weigh it out. We're going to do uh, one part hide glue granules to 1.9 parts cold water. There we go. We got 50 grams of glue. And I'm going to reset this. And we're going to put in 85 grams of cold water. Ooh, that goes fast. Close enough. 87 grams of water. That's going to sit for one hour. Uh, until it coagulates so that it looks like uh, kind of kind of like fish roe and then uh, and then it goes into a double boiler here on the electric element so I'm going to set up the fretboard here and index it onto the right position on the neck uh, one method is to use pins you know maybe a pin here and a pin here um, so that when you glue it you can snap it into the pins, but I want something even a little less fussy than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these little blocks of rosewood to the underside here. Um, and that way, that way it'll just fit right on there one way only. Because we have to worry about uh, how fast we can get this done with the hot hide glue. So while I'm going to set this up, let's take a look at what's going on over here. What are you doing? Looks like you're making amplifiers. I'm just installing it. <laughs> Not making it. Well, you're making, you're making the, the, Box. the head cabinet. Ah. Two of them, for me. For free. For free? <laughs> All right. No, that's the best part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my method of aligning the fretboard to the neck blank um, and getting it ready for gluing. So uh, first thing, I've got this centered out and uh, I've got a scrap of our truss rod cover, um, the, the maple filler strip material, which is exactly the same width as a nut. So this can go in here to index the uh, space that the the fretboard is away from the headstock veneer and uh, the rest of it I'm going to use these little scrap blocks and I'm just going to super glue them right to the neck shaft now this is a departure from the way most people make uh, Les Paul necks uh, most people take the the fretboard and build the fretboard completely meaning they taper it, they radius it, install the inlays, uh, the frets, the whole nine yards, and then glue it to the next shaft. I do it differently because I like the idea of gluing a flat 
square, meaning square planes, perpendicular planes, rectangular piece of wood to another wide shaft piece of mahogany, even clamping pressure. I can, I can use a, a call, either a hardwood call or a piece of plywood on top of this to clamp it down. And it's a, just a much more even clamping pressure than trying to clamp something that's got frets in it, that's, got ra that's radius, all that stuff. Actually, I have to stop here and add something that I forgot. This is really important as to why I construct necks in this fashion. And it's because I use hide glue to glue the fretboard onto the neck shaft. We'll see this coming up in a few minutes in the video where I prepare the hide glue. And so the, th the thing with hide glue is that it's mostly water. And so when you apply it to the, um, the fretboard and the neck shaft and clamp it together, there is usually, well, there's almost always going to be some kind of warpage that happens because, um, <clears throat> uh, the, especially the mahogany, it sucks up that water and it tends to swell. So because of this, there is some distortion when you pull the piece out of the clamps. What was a perfectly straight piece before is going to have some back bow. This is why I do it this way before there are any frets or inlays or anything in the fretboard. Because then I can plane the fretboard and make it perfect and true. This is a, a very critical step. Uh, for me. So you might ask, why use hide glue then if it's going to cause you all this problem? Well, um, for two reasons. Hide glue, I do believe that it has a better sonic transmission. Uh, the neck will resonate better because it does dry crystalline hard and um, <clears throat> it has zero thermoplastic creep. And also because uh, it's a very uh, forgiving glue as far as repairs go. If I ever need to take the fretboard off, um, all you need to do is heat it and the glue goes back to its original state. Um, uh, it's very, very easy to repair. But it really is mostly for uh, the sonic behavior of it. All right, back to regular scheduled programming. So anyway, here we go with the blocks. I got one block there. I'm just going to super glue it right to the next shaft. Put a bead of glue there and right away hit it with some accelerator. Same thing here. And at the very end of the fretboard. How's that hot glue looking? What's the temperature there? One thirty-five. One thirty-five. No. Okay. Thirty-six. All right, it should be a little bit hotter. We're looking for 145 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's okay. We'll gradually get it up to speed. Uh, can, you, uh, can you turn the heat? Yeah, turn it up a little bit. Go ahead. Uh, clockwise. Oh, this damn camera keeps slipping down. Okay, so we've got these all the little blocks glued in place, and I'll show you how easy this is going to be to glue in. We're not going to have to take no time at all indexing it when we go to pop this in. So get rid of some of that excess zip kicker, and it'll just done. So the hide glue is ready to go. Our blank is ready, clamps are ready to go. And here, you can see the fretboard is, uh, this is a radiant heater up here. We've just got it hanging under the radiant heater so that it heats it up nice. 
um, and the call, the clamping call, is attached right to it, so we don't have to fiddle with it at the last second. And then we go for gluing. Okay, then we go for gluing. Yay! Now here's the neck out of the clamps. Uh, the glue line looks beautiful. A little bit of squeeze out all along. Um, so now, um, the way I'm going to cut the profile of the neck, the taper, the width, is uh, I'm simply going to mark out the width here at the nut with the knife. Uh, first I'll find the center line and uh, the neck width itself um, is 1 and 11 sixteenths. I'll put a notch with my knife at both points and then same thing down at this end for the width of the neck. Then I'm going to take this uh, piece of maple which I had just planed down. It's nice and flat and dead straight and I'm going to stick it to the fretboard aligning it with the notches on each end and then uh, trim it with a bandsaw close and then finish it off with a router with a follower bit. And we'll let that set for a minute and bandsaw the excess off. This is a huge router bit that I bought uh, a while ago, years ago. Uh, what is this? This is inch and a quarter in diameter. Uh, and it's got a follower bearing on the bottom and that's this is what we're going to use to trim the uh, the neck profile. So I've got a router here that's got speed control on it and it's set down to about halfway, about 10,000 RPM. Um, and, that, uh, and that works well.
and that's one side done same process for the other side and uh, the neck is then profiled March 2nd 2017 view of the backyard and who do we have here mr. rooster and a bunch of his chickens <laughs> All right, last time we talked about uh, fitting the necks into the mortises and uh, now we're going to continue along and uh, cut the binding channel on the fretboard. So here's uh, Tim's guitar. This transition here is really close, really, really close. Just a bit of, once it's all glued in, uh, a bit of sanding will make that totally flush. I'm gonna use this Stumac binding router set um, to route the binding channel on the neck. Now, uh, some of you smart guys might say to yourselves, What's going to happen here, right? This roller is going to fall into the cavity and and uh, route off my fingerboard. No, that's not what's going to happen. Uh, because of the method that I build the neck, this is you know it. This can be seen as a a bit of a, a pain to do, um, and it is a little more work. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick these blocks of wood. I'll use the uh, masking tape super glue method one on each side one there one on the other side and then on the router table I'm going to route them flush with the fretboard that way once they're flush it'll give the follower a continuous um, surface to uh, to register right. so here we have completed the binding channel route Let's see that right there And I also have just finished thicknessing the fretboard to the dimension I want um, before I do the inlays. I'm going to use this template here for our inlays next, and uh, then we'll do the uh, we'll radius the board. <laughs> 